Lord God, we are so grateful to be here. You said in your world where the Son of God is, there is a hope in heaven where angels are ascending and descending. And that's the reason you are worthy of it all. Worthy of it all. I invite you to lift up your hand and to worship this precious Jesus who is here this morning here in Singapore. This country, I said that already to the other services, uh, you have such a favor of the Lord on your place. And you have just to honor this favor because it's unique. I've been traveling to more than 90 countries. I never felt such a favor. Why don't you lift up your hands and you just worship Him? And as you worship Him, the presence and the power of the Lord is moving on this place. Uh, let me just... Uh, the wind is different than the service before. And uh, that's the mistake that some of the preacher or most of the Christian does. Uh, they want to do a copy-paste of what they experienced before or years ago, even just an hour ago. I want to tell you the Holy Spirit is a wind and He's moving wherever He wants. Uh, and what He has done in the first service, even if it was glorious, uh, it's a different atmosphere right now because He's willing to touch you just because you are different people than the first service. And the Lord is willing to touch you. I feel very strongly to tell you something. I'm coming from the fifth and sixth generation born again people. My dad was a pastor, grandpa was a pastor, uh, even a songwriter, but all from the brethren family who are not charismatic. And I honor this denomination because that's the place where I learn to love the Word of God. And I love the Word of God. Early in the morning, every morning, I open the book and enjoy to go and to learn and to know more about Him. But at the age of five, I felt that I have to give myself my life to Jesus. I got saved wonderfully as some of you are going to be saved this morning because this is the day that the Lord has made. And this is not the day of damnation, but this is the day of salvation in Jesus' name. And at the age of six, and I feel strongly to share that, I'm going to release something on this place. The age of six, my parents just proposed me to pray for me. I was on my pyjama, on my bedroom. They lay hands on me and it, they did the prayer that every parent should do for their children. They said, Father, in Jesus' name, baptize our son with the Holy Spirit and fire. They didn't finish it. Heaven just opened up in my life. The fire of God came with tens of thousands of volts of power coming upon my life from the top of my head to the soil of my feet. And on this fire, I heard God's voice calling me to become a preacher to the nations of the world. But on that same fire, I heard it out loud. Europe shall be saved. That's the reason from that moment I had faith and I have faith that I'm going to see my continent saved. By God's grace, I became a very close friend of Reinhard Bonnke. He became my father, spiritual father, came many times at home. He brought me in Africa. I saw this big crowd. I will never forget the day he brought me to his largest crusade. In one meeting, I was with him on the stage, crying like a baby. The official say it was five million people. He is an honest man. I went with Peter van der Berg just to calculate the crowd in a precise way. It was 1.6 million people. You can just turn like that thing, big crowd. And when Reinhardt did the altar call after a pure, clear gospel presentation, one million and thirty-six thousand people filled the register card to give their life to Jesus. When I saw that, I cried. Yeah, we can give a clap to the Lord. 
Because what He has done in the past is going to do it again. And I feel to release that over this place today. The Lord that I heard when I was a little boy is declaring, Europe shall be saved. And by the way, I want to say a big thanks to Pastor Young and Pastor Daphne and the church here who is helping us to reach our continent for the Lord. Thanks for your help. Thanks for your support. And many thank you for your investment in Wales by rebuilding this beautiful Bible college. Everybody should go over there. There is a revival spirit. Uh, and if you want to have it in this place, go over there, take this fire, bring it here back. Uh, because I am hearing the same sound that I'm, I heard when I was a little boy. I'm hearing very clearly, Asia shall be saved in the name of Jesus. I declare again, Asia shall be saved. Singapore shall be saved. Malaysia shall be saved. Indonesia shall be saved. Philippines shall be saved. Myanmar shall be saved. This generation shall be saved. If you do believe, say a big Amen. My friend, I came here. I don't know exactly. I know one thing. I came to stop to meet Pastor Young to see how we can walk closer to reach Europe. But at the same time, the moment I put my feet at the airport, I started to see a huge harvest in Asia. I text to my twin brother. I said, Mateo, there is a huge harvest in Asia. You need to come back. You need to, to plow. You need to preach the gospel in Asia. Huge harvest. I share that to you, my friends. Because I know you are part of this great harvest. Uh, started with a big prayer movement. Uh, that's the way I started a few years ago. When the Lord called me at the age of 16, I said, I'm ready to go. Reinhard Bonke invited me to his fire conference. Uh, I came back home with the fire, willing to rent the stadium. The Lord said, you're not going to rent the stadium now. You're going to go first to your knee. And that's how I started, 4 a.m. every Saturday morning for 10 years. I did just a four-hour prayer. In the beginning, nobody came. Even my own church didn't want to open the building because it was too early. So we start in a very, very small cave, humid cave, no heat, nothing. I started with three people praying for revival in Europe. Then the crowd started to grow. And in the midst of this crowd, in one eye, I was praying for revival. And the other way, I was seeing a beautiful lady in this prayer meeting. And she became my wife. You can see her on the picture right now. And by the way, I want to say a big thanks to her. She is a woman of God. When I decide to do this travel, it was supposed to do just 10 days. Normally, I do short-term trip. But uh, it finished to a 21 day. And I went to her, I said, honey, that's not the deal. We, we decide you, I can travel, but short term, 21 days, it's a long term. I said, I'm ready to cancel or Singapore or Melbourne or one of the places just to make it short. And she said, no, that's the Lord. Please go, honey. I'm with you. And not only that, I'm going to fast on water for revival to the places where you go. I honor my wife. She is a business lady, but prayer lady. And I believe there is a huge prayer movement that will raise among you, especially among the young people. They will start to pray day and night, prayer night for revival in Singapore, but not only in Singapore, around the world in the name of Jesus. Now I want to open the word of God because I feel the presence of the Lord. I feel the Holy Spirit moving in this place and actually there is a healing presence starting to move and touching the people that's the reason I feel very strongly to read with you three verses that will just release something it's in Luke chapter 6 verse 17 and 19 it said Jesus 
came down with them and stood on a level place with a crowd of dis disciples and a great multitude of people from all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon who came to hear him and be healed of their disease as well as those who were tormented with unclean spirits. I feel this morning there is many unclean spirits on this place. They're going to live in a few minutes. Uh, you are tormented by them. But before the end of the service, the Holy Spirit uh, will come over you and will set you free. And it's written, and they were healed. And the whole multitude sought to touch him for Power went out from him and healed them all. Holy Spirit, uh, the same Spirit who was upon Jesus, uh, I pray that this morning you can reveal us our greatest Lord, our greatest Savior, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. And I pray that all of us, we can have a fresh revelation, a new revelation of Jesus himself. Oh Lord, we don't want to know the intellectual Jesus. We don't want to know the religious Jesus. We want to know the real Jesus. The Jesus who never changed and who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And that's the reason, as you are alive, Jesus, I welcome you in this place. And I allow you to do what you want to do. And why not to do the same things you've done when you were on this planet Earth by healing them all. I know the day is coming where we're going to see that. Why not today? Why not today, Lord? Do it. Come in this hall. Manifest yourself. I see Jesus moving in this place, my friend. When I just went there just before because I felt the presence of the Lord. I think the Lord is here. What's the 18th row? One, two, three, four, five, six. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. On this row, the Lord showed me there is somebody who needs a specific healing for your teeth. It's a strange stuff. We are in a rich country where probably you can go to the dentist and it's not a trouble to go to the dentist because God can heal through the medical doctor as well and he's still the healer and it's not a second class healing being healed through a doctor but somebody here on this row has a teeth trouble that the Lord wants to touch who is this person? just lift up your hand if you have a teeth trouble things that need a miracle or infection or pain, right now, just lift up your hands uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, no by mind. Just stand on your feet, lady. Just stand on your feet if you can. Can you stand on your feet? Do you speak English? Yes. You have teeth trouble? In Jesus' name, I release the power of the Holy Spirit over you right now. As the power is touching you, I receive another thing so, that I saw, and that's so strange sometimes. I saw the number 4245. Uh, I don't know what it means, if it's a street number or the last digital number of your phone number. 4245. Just stand on your feet. The Lord is touching your teeth right now. He's doing a miracle, removing the things right now. It's just crackling right now. In Jesus' name, be healed. But who is this person? 4245. Uh, I have a specific word for you. The Lord is willing to heal you. If it's you, just lift up your hands. Uh, 4245. Uh, now there is another thing here. Uh, as the Lord is touching you, I, I, I see, uh, I'm grateful for the ch my church. As I, I have a church in Switzerland, uh, I'm part of the senior team. And before I left, they prayed for me. And one of the prophets prophesied, says, Jean-Luc, uh, wherever you're going to go on this trip, uh, the cancer, cancer, the tumor will dry up. Uh, if you have a cancer, if you are of a tumor, I want you to stand on your feet. Uh, because the Lord is going to heal you right now. Just right now. 
If you are suffering from a cancer or a tumor, stand on your feet. Don't wait tomorrow. Don't write me on Instagram. Just stand on your feet right now. In the name of Jesus, I command this tumor, this cancer to dry up in the name of Jesus. As the worship team say, worthy is the Lord. I want just to, it's not a healing service, even if there is a strong healing presence today. And as I said before, I do believe the Lord is coming with a new healing wave, a new healing revival on this place. So open yourself to Him as something new is happening. You're going to see miracles and healings in this region, especially in this city, like you've never seen before. But on Christmas, just the day before Christmas, my niece called me. She was on the hospital with her baby. Baby was born a month ago and he had major trouble of his breath. He couldn't breathe normally. They had to put him to the emergency, was about to die. And she called me, she said, Jean-Luc, the baby is very not well. I'm at the hospital. I don't want to spend Christmas at the hospital. And she, actually she wrote me, that was the way. And the morning when I was praying, suddenly the anointing came, as I feel the anointing right now. And I call her, I say, Marie-Laure, please, can I have a FaceTime with you and the baby at the hospital? She just texts me, I make the FaceTime, I saw the baby with all the tube, all the things. But the power of God came over me and came over this baby like he wants to come over you right now. Because the Holy Spirit is a beautiful power to heal those who are suffering. I pray a simple prayer, but I allow the power of God to touch this baby. An hour later, she texts me back. She said, Jean-Luc, it's a miracle. It's a miracle, baby. Everybody at the hospital is talking about that. They took off all the tubes, all the oxygen is totally healed. We can leave the place to go home for Christmas. Now, an hour later, she called me, she said, please, can you pray for the other babies in the place? Because they are other, especially my neighbor, same situation. I say, what the Lord has done for your baby is going to do it for the neighbor as well. In the hospital, I pray an hour later, another baby get totally healed and they came back home for Christmas. Uh, why I'm sharing that? Because the testimony is the word of prophecy. All those who have a breath trouble with the lungs, asthma, or whatever is a trouble with the breath, I want you to stand on your feet. And as you stand on your feet by faith, I'm going to pray. Or oh, there is at least 20 people. I saw that early this morning. All those who have a trouble with the breath, uh, lungs, problem with asthma, at least 20 people. I saw it. I want you to stand on your feet if you expect your miracle. And right now, I pray in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, who came upon this little baby at the hospital in Lausanne, I pray that you may come over them. In a fresh way. What? Woe is the land. In Jesus' name. I take authority over every spirit who is bringing trouble. There is five of those who are up. You have trouble to breathe because it's an unclean spirit who is making trouble to you. So right now in the name of Jesus, I command this unclean spirit to leave this five person, but also all this place who are under the oppression of the devil I set you free in Jesus name evil spirit unclean spirit leave these people in Jesus name not only those who are up but those who are sitting be free 
in Jesus name now I pray for all those who have a breath trouble I release the anointing of the Holy Spirit to the lungs to the throat to all the breath system I release the wind of God over your breath system be healed in Jesus name be healed free from asthma free from this disease there is somebody who has like the it's a sickness that just dry up your lungs I don't know what the name of this sickness but the Lord is healing you right now I don't know if it's here on the on the on the, the, the life is it life it's like a sickness that make your lungs drying up like they, they become smaller is there somebody there who has this trouble in Jesus name be healed right now be healed in Jesus name if you need a healing lift up your hand and sing worthy is the Lamb who is the healer this morning sit on the over every disease paralyzed spirit live in Jesus name every pain every infection live in Jesus name as you are worthy 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 to be praised be healed in the name of Jesus Christ amen and amen can we give a clap to the Lord Jesus? He is worthy, worthy. Thanks so much, the worship team. When I'm coming back in Asia, I hire you directly. Can we give them a clap? It's just a great joy and privilege to be here in Singapore. You can leave unless you want to stay. I will just bring the word not too long because I see the time is passing so quickly and I don't know how I'm going to make it. But one thing is sure is that uh, you are such a precious people and it's a great joy to be here. As uh, if you can just show the picture, as I say, I have my family, four children, and I just became the third time a grandpa on the 31st of December. Such a joy. All of them, they are serving the Lord. If you go to my website, I want to send you for free the weekly Hope Inspiration. That's all the ministry I'm in charge of. By the way, if you are an evangelist, please contact us. We want to work with you. I want to send you for free this week hope inspiration and if you go for the next one I want to invite all of you it's a special invitation for Amsterdam 2023 we rent the biggest all exhibition in the world for four days we are inviting every nations of the world to come exactly without knowing it because the Lord told us but it's exactly 40 years day to day after the Billy Graham mission conference it's for this new generation where we invite all the soul winner, the church planters, the evangelists. Actually, it should be every believer who want to bring the gospel to this generation. For four days, we're going to pray, we're going to seek the Lord, we're going to share, we're going to hear, hear what the Lord is doing around the world. That's the reason I invite you, because we want to hear what the Lord gave you. What you carry, it's unique, and the other nations of the world need it. So that's for come with Pastor Young because he's one of the speakers. We have more than 150 major speakers. Claudio Friedson, Bill Johnson, Heidi Baker, and uh, even Franklin Graham, the Palau Association. is not just the charismatic, but it's going to be a spirit-filled conference. Uh, so be sure to come to this event. Uh, and the last day, we rent the Olympic Stadium, and we're going to light the light, the fire, you know, the fire of the Olympic things. Uh, 
we ask for that, it's going to be the fire because we want everybody goes back to his place with the fire of the Holy Ghost to reach this generation for Jesus. The vision and what we believe, it's before Pentecost 2033. Every human being on planet Earth, including your family, your father, your mother, your brother, your sister, everyone, they may have a true encounter with Jesus through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean everybody will be saved, but everybody on this planet Earth, by Pentecost 2033, they will hear the gospel. So be sure to be there. We will, uh, if you use the code ESBS, Europe shall be saved. We will make you a special promotion. And I finish with that. Uh, I just before I came here, I released, uh, actually I wrote a book in French uh, that became a bestseller. And many people say you need to translate. The hour before coming here, they came. And uh, if you order it, I will send it to you from our place. We'll send it even here in Singapore. And in a few weeks, uh, I'm releasing a brand new book, Moving in Miracles and Healings. One is the foreword by Heidi Baker, the other one from Bill Johnson. And I want to give the only the sample that I brought to my very good friend, Benjamin Lim, that I love so, so much. He came to help us in Swiss, in Europe, and it was just beautiful. I want to go to the Word of God. The Word of God says, when you produce much fruit, you are my true disciples. This brings great glory to my Father. I want to tell you, my friends, uh, the religious spirit, which is one of the, I mean, every demons, I hate them. But one I hate specifically is this religious spirit uh, who try to bring the Christian in small places with small mentality, try to put them in a box uh, with a, a, a demonic spirit. Uh, and one of these things, on one of these effects, uh, especially in Europe, I don't know much here in Singapore, but it make believe to the Christian that they need to be so humble that they show nothing and they have no fruits. Uh, I want to tell you, the Bible is just saying the opposite. When you have fruits and much fruits, that's the way it being, bring glory to the Lord. If you want to glorify the Lord, you need to bear fruits and fruits in abundance. And one of the way to bring fruits is to do what Jesus has done, like healing the sick. And that's one of my things. For many years, since I'm a little boy, I've been studying through books and and all the way we are able to study regarding the healing movement uh, and revival movement. Uh, and I saw that from the early church, it was some people who were carrying this torch or revival, or especially with the healing presence and healing anointing. If you come in my house, I have hundreds of books and tapes and things like that regarding this move of God. And I was so impressed by studying some of them who were really the early Christian, and then they became heroes during the centuries, like Tertullian or Irene de Lyon, amazing man who did great miracle. Saint Augustin, maybe you are not familiar with that, uh, in Europe is very well known. And even I read some books about the Orthodox foolish ministry, how they call it, les folles orthodox. And uh, it's people were moving with signs and wonders, miracles and healings. Uh, such a beautiful way to learn with this mystical way how God is moving. But even the reformator, Luther, Wesley, and many other were moving in power. And then maybe closer, Dorothea Trudel, who was a Swiss lady who started the first healing rooms uh, or healing homes. Uh, even the Swiss government, they prepare some special train to bring the sick people to the place. It was powerful. But I asked the Lord, who among all these people were the strongest one? Was it John Gillick or Maria Woodward Setter or one of these guys? And the Lord suddenly showed me in the heaven like in a fire letter. No, the most powerful healing ministry was J E S. U.S. Jesus. I say I want to be like him because I want to heal them all like he did. And when I started to study his life, I discover 
He did these miracles not by might, not by power, but through the Holy Spirit. He was anointed with the Holy Spirit and power. Going from places to places, healing the sick. And that's the reason I started to study about the anointing of the Holy Ghost. I get hungry and thirsty, fasting, praying, looking, wanting all this anointing. And I want to tell you, my friend, that's still my desire more than anything else. As I say all the time, especially to my family or my, those who, who coach me, I say, how was my preaching? I don't care if it was good or not. The main things I want to know, was it anointed? I'm looking for the anointing, the presence of God. Of course, I prepare the things well. I do the things the way we have to do it. But the anointing is the most important ingredient for ministry. I want to invite you, friends, to be, to look and to be hungry for this presence of God and this special anointing. And by the way, just a few days ago, I released a prophetic word that you can watch on my YouTube channel about what the Lord wants to do for this year. Psalm 23, verse 5, that's the main things I receive. I feel that the Lord is preparing a table for you, my friend. In front of you enemies, in front of you challenges, this is the day where the Lord is calling you to come on his table for a face-to-face -face with the Lord of Lords. And on this table, there is an abundant, glorious, divine meal where he will give you new strengths, new revelation. It will be something fantastic. So don't be afraid of opposition and even persecution. Because I'm telling you something, we are not going to a season where it's going to be easier. We have entered into a season where darkness is arising. Opposition is becoming stronger. But the good news is, God's glory is arising like never before. And in front of our enemies, the God is preparing us a table. And on this table, the Lord God Almighty is taking His precious oil, His pure oil, His amazing oil of the Holy Ghost. And He's about to pour it over your head to anoint you with a fresh anointing. Friends of the community church, Cornerstone Church, there is a fresh anointing coming over this place, over your life, over your family. If you believe it, just lift up your hands and say, anoint me with the fresh oil of the Spirit. If I can ask the worship team, what well, is the player, the keyboard player to come back, it will be wonderful. But regarding the anointing, I said, Lord, is that really the only ingredient we need, the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit? He said, no, you need the main one. You need Jesus himself. I said, Lord, how can we have that both? Not by mind, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. And the Lord gave me a strong revelation that's coming to you today. He said, Jean-Luc, I want to do to you and to the body of Christ what an amazing lady experienced years ago. It was a prophetic manifestation. Her name is Mary. The angel came, Luke 1, 26, came unto her and said, You are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. If you can play sweetly, because I feel the anointing, the presence of the Lord, and I pray that now, as I have just a few more minutes, I pray for miracles that goes behind the world, but that will provoke a, a mystical but powerful miracle. I pray in Jesus' name. The angel said to her, Fear not, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, you shall conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. Then said Mary unto angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you and the 
power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore also that holy being who shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. For with God nothing is impossible. My friends, I'm coming to you not as an angel. My wife can tell you I'm not an angel. But one thing is sure. I'm a messenger for the Lord telling you, fear not. Fear not, friends. Fear not, for you have found favor. You have the favor of God. I already spoke that to you. There is a, such a great favor over this land, over this country. And because you have found favor to the Lord, the Lord is telling you as a community, but also as an individual, as a person, You will conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son and you will name him Jesus. How is that possible? For with God, nothing is possible. The Holy Spirit, my friends, want to come over you. And when he say he will overshadow you the same way he overshadow Mary, it's the word in Hebrew, episkiazo which mean like a cloud. It's the same word that was used when the Israelites were in the desert. During the day, the cloud was with Israel. During the night, it was a pillar of fire, which was the evidence of the presence and the power of God. My friend, the Holy Spirit will overshadow you. Something is about to happen to you. And this Holy Spirit is what we said. It's the holy wind of God. Spirit in, him, in Greek is Ruah. Ruah is the wind of God. My friend, the wind of God coming out of the nostril of God, coming out of the mouth through the word of God is coming over your life to overshadow you that you can have not a mystical experience to say that it's something fantastic, but it's about to release something in you that will change your life. It will change your character. It will change your destiny. Destiny, the same way he came upon Mary, is about to come, nor by mind, nor by power, but through the Holy Spirit. He wants to visit inside of you, your virgin spaces, and he wants to come with such a strong presence and powerful manifestation to release inside a new seed over your dream, over the call of God upon your life, and in connection with what He's doing globally around the world, but also in connection with the body of Christ. The power of the Holy Spirit is overshadowing you with a creative power and fire to give birth to new things, new projects, new realization. His desire is to deposit and release a seed inside of you which has the same shape of Jesus, who looks like Jesus, who smells like Jesus, which comes from Jesus, who is Jesus' His words. And He wants to make you fruitful, that you can bear much fruit. This action of God as I said, will change your life and it will change your character forever. Because this is not about a visitation, but it's all about the habitation of God in you. I want to invite you to stand on your feet, on your feet, sorry. Through this powerful experience, the will will bring some change. The power of the Holy Spirit will radically change your character to be more like Jesus, full of this fruit of the Spirit, including the joy, the peace, the love, the long-suffering, the passion, the goodness, that you may be like Jesus. So let's welcome Him to overshadow us and invade our deep being, invade our womb, that He can release this seed. Right now, the Holy Spirit wants to release this seed inside of you, this eternal, glorious seed that you can conceive Jesus. Miracle is happening right now in this place. 
It goes behind my words. I release what I was able to release. But now the Holy Spirit is in this place. If you want to welcome Him, lift up your hands, start to speak in tongues. His power is overshadowing you. Not just with anointing, but by with releasing this seed. This seed will look sweet like Jesus. And as if you already receive it, this seed is growing inside of you. Growing to become a baby. Growing to become a teenager inside of you. Growing to become in full dimension, in full capacity. Becoming the real Jesus inside of you. And as He's taking the place inside of you, that's the reason you need to decrease that he may increase. You need to disappear that he can appear to your family, to your neighbor, to the walking place where you are. Because we are in the season where Jesus wants to reveal himself to this generation. That whoever can call upon his name shall be saved. This is the time where Jesus wants to walk in the streets of Singapore, going to the places, to the bank, to the marketplace, and to bring the healing power and to heal them whole. How will it be possible? For nothing is impossible for God. And it will happen through you, through the power of the Holy Spirit, which just increasing growing, taking the place with a great authority. As everybody has their eyes closed, I want to give the opportunity for all those who are here this morning who never gave their life to Jesus. Or maybe you have been baptized Catholic or Lutheran or maybe brethren blessed like an evangelical. Maybe you are Muslim and Buddhist. Welcome. All of you, you are welcome. But I want to tell you something. If you want to be saved, it's not your church who can save you. Why? Because none churches died for you. No pastor can save you. No priest can save you. Because none of them died for you. Even myself, I can do nothing for you. But I have a good news. Jesus. Jesus. This beautiful name. Jesus came 2,000 years ago. He went from places to places, healing the sick, casting out demons, doing good. But the main reason He came on this earth is to go on the cross, to die for your sin and your sicknesses. The third day He rose again and is alive today. That whoever on this place or those who are watching at home can call upon this name and they will be saved. As everybody has their eyes closed, if you never gave your life to Jesus, you don't have the life. Because only Jesus is the life. He's the only truth. He's the only way. And if you want this eternal abundant life, you need to give your life to Jesus. So as everybody has their eyes closed, I want to give this opportunity. If you don't know Jesus and you want that He save you, or maybe you are a backslider living in sin, I want to tell you this is no more the time to live between two worlds. You cannot live in sin and live a holy life. You need to choose. You cannot be in darkness and the other foot with the Lord Jesus. Impossible. You need to make one decision and you are free. But I'm telling you, if you want to spend eternity with the Lord Jesus, give your life, repent of every sins and follow Him. That's worth of all. If you want this morning, you say, I want to give my life for the first time. Or I want to repent of my sin. I want that He save me this morning. I want you raise up your hands so I can pray for you wherever you are. If you want to give your life to Jesus this morning, don't be shy. Don't say, I do it in my heart. I want you manifest publicly by lifting up your hands so I can pray for you. If that's your desire, right now, lift up your hands. I want to pray for you. I see the hand of this young boy. I see 
Who else on this place? I see the hands of this lady over there. Is there somebody else who say, I will not leave the place without being right with the Lord. That's why I give my life to Jesus. If it's your desire, lift up your hands and I'm going to pray with you. If you are at home, you would never give your life to Jesus. You want to repent of your sin. You can do the same. And I invite you to do this simple prayer with me. Let's say, Lord Jesus. Say out loud, Lord Jesus. I'm sorry for every sins I've done. Forgive me. I really regret it. I believe you are the Son of God. And you died for me in the cross. And you rose again. And you are alive today to save my life. That's for with all my heart, I call upon your name. And I said, Jesus. Son of the living God, save my soul, save my life, deliver me from every evil spirit, set me free from hell, and give me your abundant life. By faith, I receive you. By faith, I receive the forgiveness of every sin. I welcome you. I want to serve you. In Jesus' name. My time is very over. I'm sorry, Pastor. I want you to lift up all your hands. Uh, and I want to pray that you get baptized with this Holy Spirit. And never forget the revivalist Scott said that. Uh, getting baptized with the Holy Spirit should not be a historical experience. It should be a daily experience. Uh, if you've never been baptized with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of speaking in tongues, this is your day for you. And if you want to get renewed and have again a fresh baptism of fire, lift up your hands. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name, baptize my precious friends here or at home with your Holy Spirit and fire. And want you open your mouth, and you start to speak this beautiful language and more beautiful start to release now a new song for the King of Kings in spirit and in tongues. Open your mouth, everybody open his mouth and start to worship the Lord. Sing a new song, not an old song, a new song for the Lord. Release the sound from this beautiful ground of Singapore. Come on, lift up the name of Jesus in spirit and in tongue. Come on, let's worship. Worship Him. Worship Him in Jesus' name.